Imagine a world in which everything is rigid. Trees, grass, even yourself. You would interact with the world in a very specific way. But what if you couldn't tell the difference between what's solid and what's liquid? Luckily for us humans, we can distinguish between things that are solid, like mugs or books, and stuff that isn't, like sand or honey. Our brain makes it so easy and effortless, we don't even think about it. AI systems, on the other hand, still struggle with this kind of perception and reasoning. How does our brain solve this so effortlessly? That's what our team at MIT wanted to find out. We know from previous studies that the lateral occipital complex, or LOC, processes the 3D shape of rigid objects. We also know that a network in the frontoparietal cortex becomes active when we think about the physics of an object, like the stability of this block tower. But these studies only looked at rigid objects, and we don't live in a rigid Minecraft world. Our world is filled with stuff that has different physical properties and invites different actions than rigid things. To test how stuff like this is represented in the human brain, we created animations of stuff and things. For the purpose of the study, we defined things as both rigid and deformable objects, and stuff as granular and liquid substances. The videos are identical except for the materials being tested. Then we measured the brain activity of volunteers as they watched these videos in an MRI scanner. We tried to make the videos as engaging as possible so that our volunteers would attentively watch them. Based on the data from these brain scans, we found three key results. First, the LOC, which is known to process the shape of rigid 3D objects, also represents deformable materials and stuff. Second, the frontoparietal network, which we know processes the physics of rigid objects, also represents the physics of stuff. And finally, and most importantly, we found that both LOC and the physics network show distinct subregions, one with a preference for things and another with a preference for stuff. These findings suggest that distinct mental algorithms are engaged when we perceive things and stuff. Interestingly, video games work this way too. Most game engines represent things and stuff in different formats, meshes for objects and particles for fluids. Our study raises a lot of interesting questions about the mental computations and representations that our brain uses to navigate the physical world. The answers may help us build smarter AI, better virtual worlds, and maybe even rethink the way we design technology that interacts with the real world.